Hey everyone, Keegan here with Dark Arrow. In today's video, I wanted to show you how we take a part that we've modeled in the computer world and bring that part to life in the real world. There are some manufacturing steps involved and I thought it would be fun to share those with you. I'll show you how we do the CAM or computer aided manufacturing setup for operation one and operation two, how we set up the soft jaws and how we do the work offsets for all of those operations and a couple good tips and tricks in between. So let's jump right in. We are in Fusion 360's manufacturing environment. In this area, we do all the cutting tool paths to tell the CNC machine what to do. These are the parts that we're going to be machining out. These two right here, it's a left and right. Essentially, these are just little bell cranks that are used in the control system for the Dark Arrow 1. These are made out of aluminum, so we're going to be machining them out out of a half inch stock billet of aluminum. We're going to do them in two operations, and in between those two ops, we're going to be doing some soft jaw machining as well. So I want to show you guys what that looks like and just walk you through it high level. Let's look at the first machining operation. So when I click on the first machining operation over here in the left, it brings up this transparent rectangle that represents our stock. And you can see the little coordinate system that's here that represents our work coordinate system or XYZ0. For operation one, we're gonna be picking up our XYZ0 on the top center of our stock. And we're gonna be holding our stock with our vise. I don't have the whole vise modeled here, but you can see the jaws of the vise. So the back jaw here, this big rectangular block, is our fixed jaw. And then the one in front here is our movable jaw. And then the two thinner rectangles are our parallels that our stock is going to sit on. So I can simulate the tool paths here for you quick. Spot drilling operation for the holes. And then a drilling operation for those and really quick the reason that we drill out the center hole for the larger holes in the back is that it allows us an area to bring our end mill in when that end mill ramps in there's somewhere for the stock um, chips and coolant to go and it puts less load on our end mill when it ramps in so the roughing operation removes the bulk of the stock and we'll speed through it here quick so i'm going to skip forward here to the ramping operation you can see how it ramps in a little bit more material to remove in the middle of our holes so we're still roughing here Finishing operation, profiling the inner walls of our holes, then the outer faces. And I'll just pause it here for a second because I want to show you one quick thing to note here is that we left a little bit of additional stock here on the bottom of our parts. And this uh, does a couple things. The first thing is that it allows us somewhere to hold with our jaws and then the extra meat here ensures that our part isn't going to bend or flex in the process of doing the first operation. So good to leave a little bit of stock on the bottom here for us. All right, and then we're gonna face them, finishing facing operation. And then the last tool path is chamfering the edges. So that wraps up operation one and what we're left with if I turn on the stock remaining and I hide our jaws and our parallels is something like this. So this transparent block of material here is what remains. So the next thing to do is to remove that. And in order to do that, we need to flip our parts over and machine this material off. And before we can do that, we need a way to hold the bottom section of our parts and also to locate them. So in order to do that, we need to machine out some soft jaws. I'm gonna hide our parts here for a minute. We'll come back to those in a bit. And I'm gonna show our soft jaws. So this is what our soft jaws look like. Uh, we modeled these in Fusion and 
really what we did is just model a rectangle, model a portion of that uh, soft jaw into the part, and then did a Boolean operation to remove the material to get the profile of the part. And then we've got a little pocket feature here, which I'll talk about in a little bit. So let's look quickly at what our machining ops look like. So what we do is we remove our hard jaws from our vise, we install our soft jaws, and then I have them spaced an inch apart. And the way I space them and clamp them together, together was I just used a couple parallels. Our parallels are 0.125 inches thick. So if you stack up enough, you can build up an inch thick and then clamp your vices onto your parallels and then you've got your setup ready to go. Got our, our roughing operation here with our three foot flute quarter inch end mill. It's gonna remove the bulk of the material. And then using that same tool, we're gonna rough out our pocket feature here. Do a facing operation to get our height correct. And that's a roughing facing operation, finishing facing operation, and then profiling those edges to get them to the right dimension. Okay, once we're done with that, our soft jaws are completed and we can then drop our torque arms in for our second machining operation. So let's activate that over on the left here. And that pocket feature that I mentioned earlier is where we pick up our XYZ offsets for XYZ zero. This is our, this is our fixed jaw in the back. This is the one that doesn't move. And then the one in front of us here is our movable jaw. So the transparent material here is our stock remaining. This is what we're going to be machining off. So let's take a quick look at what that looks like. Run through the simulation. Same tool, uh, three flute quarter inch end mill. And I know I'm not covering much of the feeds and speeds. Um, this video is more about the setup of the whole machining operation. But if you want to learn more about feeds and speeds on our website, we actually have a tool in our knowledge base section that helps walk through that. This is something that we threw together um, in the process of learning how to machine. We collected a bunch of data and information and just put that into one spot. And um, we found this extremely helpful and we thought it would be helpful to others. So there's a video out there on that, but um, let's get back to the setup for op two. All right. So here is the roughing operation. We come in from the outside and work our way in. And we're just gonna remove the bulk of that remaining stock. You can see that our soft jaws keep our parts securely located and um, fixtured right in place where we need them to be, even with this material um, all removed. If we didn't have that and we hadn't machined out these soft jaws, these parts would be prone to move around in the process of uh, machining and removing this material. So after the roughing operation is complete, we come in and do a facing operation and we rough face it on both the bottom and top and then do a finishing facing operation, which you see here. And then finishing operation for the facing and then a profiling of the outside edge for each one and then finishing up with a chamfering operation or chamfering toolpath, if you will. So let's hide our soft jaws here. And that's it, that's our completed parts at that point. So what we do from here, we check our critical dimensions against our prints and our model. If everything checked out, these parts would be good to go and ready for installation on the aircraft. So that's it, that's a high level overview of the setup for these parts in the CAM environment. I hope you guys liked it, hope you enjoyed. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, we'll catch you guys in the next video.